Hi guys, DC Breaks back with another sound design tutorial. Today the focus is on how to make your own EDM bass generator and it makes what I can only describe as incredibly sploinky music. It sounds something like this. <laughs> So uh, full disclosure, I don't normally make this kind of music, but I wanted to give it a go because I saw a video by a guy called AU5 in which he shows you how to make what he calls an ultra comb filter just using Live's built-in plugins. And essentially this consists of a comb filter, an all-pass filter and a ring shifter. And by manipulating some of the main parameters, you can start to get some of these uh, textures that you're hearing in this idea here. But I wanted to kind of take that as a starting point and then apply some randomization and some different modulations to essentially make uh, a kind of uh, bass generator essentially if you will so i'm going to start at the beginning and then kind of show you how uh, i kind of developed the idea for this and essentially it's uh, kind of 1.0 if you like is very simple it's just the saw wave playing an operator being run through a series of these ultra combs so if we have a look at one of the ultra combs here you can see we've got two uh, chains the first chain is the delay followed by the phaser. The phaser has, again, two chains, one of which is uh, basically phase inverted from the other one, so that essentially you don't hear it, but you do get the phase shift effect. Um, again, I'm not gonna kind of go into too much detail about how this works precisely, because that, you can kind of see that in AU5's video, uh, but by kind of combining those two things and then finally with a ring shift at the end, um, you can kind of get uh, a combination of different kind of comb filtering type of effects. So if you assign all these to different macros, you can then kind of manipulate these and get various kind of interesting textures. So the effect is a lot more powerful if you uh, kind of run these in series. So I'm um, just gonna duplicate these four times. Uh, and then now how having done that, all of these will uh, have all of their controls also mapped to the same uh, main macro at the top of our effects channel. So you can start to hear some of the cool textures that you can get from that. So kind of taking that forward then, I wanted to see if I could make this a bit more random. So what I've done here is I've taken that same chain of our kind of four different uh, ultra combs. And I've basically used a device called MIDI Sample and Hold, which is a free Max for Live device you can get from the Max for Live uh, device library, and use that to generate different values at random for the main parameters that we're kind of controlling. So the way it works is that if you play a MIDI note in, it kind of um, randomly assigns a value and then just holds that value and then you can use that to modulate uh, or rather it's not really modulating because it's just picking a fixed value but you can use it to change uh, the values uh, in your comb filters so you can see as i'm playing you notes all these kind of things are uh, kind of changing around so you can start to hear get some really cool uh, sounds from there okay so moving forward then I wanted to see if we could develop this even further. So bear with me because the modulations and everything in this is starting to get pretty uh, out of hand. But essentially I wanted to kind of, rather than just using a standard saw wave, start using wavetable within live and applying modulation to the wavetable and to the effects at the same time. And then you get something that sounds like this. <laughs> Okay, so um, because of the kind of increased randomness, some of the notes don't sound that good. That's fine because we're going to kind of sample the ones that we do want and I'm going to go through the workflow for doing that uh, in just a moment. But essentially to kind of show you roughly what's going on. So within Wavetable, we've got two LFOs. If we come to our mod sources, you can see they are here. And these are, are kind of being modulated by um, an LFO uh, shaper as well. So just kind of add some extra movement. These are then being assigned to things like the wavetable uh, oscillator position and the oscillator warp. And that's kind of creating this modulation within here. If I just turn off the comb filters, you can see what we're getting without any of the comb filtering stuff. Uh, 
But you can also see down here, the global amount of all of this modulation is also being controlled by some other, um, basically, uh, modulators. So I'm using a combination of the Shaper MIDI um, Max for Live device, which is, or uh, MIDI effect device, which you can get um, from the MIDI effects menu. And this allows you to kind of draw in your own kind of shapes. It's also got this random button and you can actually use sample and hold to trigger um, random values as well. So if we take a look at this, for example, so you can see this is assigned to the random button. So when I press a, a MIDI note, we're getting a, a random value and that is randomly turning on random shapes of our shape of MIDI. So you can see, I'm not always going to change it, but sometimes if the value's right, it's going to generate a random shape. And then that's being used to modulate other things as well, such as the amount of other um, generators that are basically controlling some of the parameters that we've got. So it's kind of two layers, if you like, of modulation. We're generating things at random, values at random, that's creating random patterns, and then those random patterns are controlling some of the macros that we've got set up. So we've got that going on, and then we've also got that combined with the kind of randomness we had from before of the uh, comb filtering effects as well. So you can now start to see these moving around. So we're not just getting randomized values, we're also getting random modulated uh, values of all the effects uh, and uh, also the wavetable stuff as well. And when you put those two things together, it starts to become really powerful. So once you've kind of got that, that's really it. Um, but then you can also start to explore some other variations. So this one, for example, has a different waveform just called unaligned form. I also kind of changed the voice to have a bit of uh, unison and just basically kind of creating some different variations as well. That's a nice one. Um, so from here, what I'm using is a plugin. Again, I've got this set up on a keyboard shortcut um, just to make it really simple called Rolling Sampler. Now it's not a free plugin, but it's only $19. It's really worth buying because what it allows you to do is to take a sound. In fact, I'm just gonna grab this one that I just played now because it just sits in the background sampling away to whatever you run into it. And then when you want it, when you make something that you like, and this, again, when it's random like this is really good to do, you can just grab it and chuck it into your project. Um, and there we have it. So if I play another note, and again, because it's on this, it's not going to sample anything else that's going on in the project. So we might want, want that one or maybe not. Hey everyone, I hope you've been enjoying this tutorial. At DBS Institute, we provide degree level training to help you take your skills to the next level and start your career in music production. Head to the link to find out more. So once you've got some sounds that you like, you can then start to chop them together and edit them together to make a loop like I did earlier. Uh, the other thing I've also done, again, at the top level here is just to apply a kick and snare sidechain from a beat that I've got down here. And then also I have a sub. So I'm just sampling using the one note, which is an F. And so I've got a sub note just playing Fs underneath so that I can get a feel for uh, what this is gonna sound like in the context uh, of a tune. So let's just chuck this one over here and kind of loop um, a section like this and see what this one sounds like. So straight away kind of getting a bit of a vibe there. Uh, but you know, if you don't like that, it's super straightforward, you just come up, get up our sampler again, take something like that and then we can just drag that in and build up a tune uh, that way. So, very crude. So that's kind of it, but then I thought, well, you can kind of go another stage further with this as well. And what I've done then is to create what I call the Inception channel. So this is just the comb effects filtering set up on an audio channel. So I've basically just copied my audio down into the same channel and then on this one, I've got, um, again, a key set up to randomize uh, different variations of the comb filtering effect as well. And then when you find ones that you like, you can save these as variations. So this is what it sounds like. 
So that's really it. I haven't really done any complex automation or anything like that. Once you've got the generator set up, you just resample it, splice it all together. You can then do some additional processing, run it back through a different chain if you want as well, or then start going in and kind of working out the levels and side chaining and EQ and all the other things you might ordinarily do. But it's a very fast workflow for quickly getting together uh, this kind of EDM style track. So let me know what you think in the comments below. And if you want to get more theory about how the Ultra Comb works, do check out AE5's original video. I've put a link in the description below, along with a link to download this project so you can try out the generator for yourself and make your own crazy good bass sounds as well. And if you have enjoyed this video, please do hit that like and subscribe button to get more videos like this from us here at DBS Institute. But that's it for this video, and I'll see you in the next one.